Welcome everybody to Forza Horizon 4 and today we're taking a look at the 1953 Jaguar C-Type. Now this was a racing sports car produced between 1951 and 1953 with only 53 being built and only 43 of those were actually sold to private owners. And uh, yeah, the C stands for competition and uh, yeah, this shares a running gear with the XK120 which is situated in a lightweight tubular frame with an aerodynamic aluminum body. And uh, yeah, this won the 1951 and 1953 24 Hours of Le Mans. And it also came in second and fourth place in that 1953 race. Uh, helped by the fact it is really rather aerodynamic. It is really rather lightweight. It's also got disc brakes all the way around. And uh, part of that lightweightness was aided by the fact it had a rubber bag fuel tank. So yeah, an incredible car really. And I'm really, really glad it's finally on a Forza game. So we can go along the size of the uh, XK120, the... Jaguar D-Type, then the Jaguar E-Type, and obviously the Mark III saloon car, which actually took some technology from this car, by the way, especially the disc brakes. And, uh, yeah, this was the first ever Le Mans winner to average a speed of more than 100 miles an hour. So that alone is, a, you know, worthy of being on a game like this, let alone the fact that it's actually a really, really good car. And it's gorgeous as well, quite frankly. I love the curves on it. I love the uh, front looks on it, and uh, yeah, under this glorious looking body is a solid engine as well. Like I said, it's got the same running gear as the XK120, so that means it shares the same engine as this, as the XK120, so that's a 3.4 litre inline 6. But in this version, this car at least, it produces 225 horsepower and 243 pounds feet of torque. So that's 15 horsepower more than the XK120 and 23 pounds feet of torque more as well. And this being as lightweight as it is, weighs only 2,127 pounds. So that 225 horsepower can be really put to use weighing only that much. And that also means it weighs 888 pounds less than the XK120. So uh, yeah, pretty formidable race car back in the day. And even in its final year at Le Mans in 1954, it still managed to come fourth place, which considering this car was pretty much out of date by that point, is still mightily impressive. But nonetheless, let's get out onto the open road and see what it can do. So this is without a shadow of a doubt one of my uh, favourite cars on this game, especially in terms of cars that we've never had on a Forza game before. And two reasons for that. One, it's really, really rather fun to drive. And secondly, I do really rather like the look of it. It's not often that racing cars are a, a thing of beauty, especially since obviously they're uh, obviously not catering to uh, style. They're more about you know aerodynamics and you know making a car as fast and as good at handling as possible. But they uh, managed to make this not only an aerodynamic ve vehicle, which obviously helps in terms of the top end speed, which is essential when you're on the Mulsanne straight in, at Le Mans, but also looks great as well in the process and you can see uh, the evolution of this car in the lights of the uh, Mark III Saloon which also had curves and that kind of front grille and uh, yeah obviously like I said put some of the stuff in this car into that Mark III same kind of engine disc brakes all around which you know is a good thing to do really because obviously this is a rare car so it, it was never going to be a, a mass produced vehicle like the Mark III which lasted eight years so to take winning uh, a winning formula from this and put it into a uh, more everyday vehicle obviously made another great car for Jaguar and uh, yeah I love this car and it's a great addition to Jaguar's lineup which quite frankly is the best lineup Jaguar has had on any Forza game it was alongside the XK120, the Jaguar E-Type, Jaguar D-Type, the Mark III saloon car and that's just the classic vehicles never mind you know the uh, newer vehicles that they also have on the game so yeah, I'm loving the lineup from Jaguar, and uh, this is a great addition to that. And it's also a uh, pretty damn fast car as well for the time. Not to 60 in 8 seconds, not to 100 in 17.150 seconds, and it going to a top speed of 153 miles an hour. Now, for whatever reason, that's slightly down in terms of not to 60 time on the XK120 by a second, but this thrashes it to 100, and uh, yeah, that car can only do 138 at the top end. So this is, yeah easily the uh, better vehicle for a straight line speed and is also a better car in terms of handling as well because like I said it doesn't have all that much in terms of weight in comparison to the XYK120 and uh, yeah 
just generally feels a bit more fun and a bit more lively to drive. You can really get the uh, tail sticking out on this thing, but it holds its own and uh, you can easily recover it. So it's also an easier car to drive than you would expect for a car that's so lightweight and uh, is from the early 50s. And yeah, I really, really wish they'd put more cars like this, especially from the early 50s that also raced at Le Mans in this game or in future games because there are plenty out there that don't ever got the, get the love or don't get the attention that quite the fact they deserve. I mean this was racing alongside Aston Martin DB2s and Ferraris of all manners and even Talbot and Nash stuff and all sorts of vehicles that I've, uh, I've never heard of up until actually researching this car or you know I've never even seen or known about so yeah really really glad this is on the game quite frankly and it certainly makes up for uh, you know the last two cars in this car pass which granted the Aston Martin is a decent car but it's far from my favourite modern Aston Martin and uh, yeah that McLaren is easily one of the most useless vehicles that's ever been put on in via a car pass quite frankly because uh, it's just a heavier version of a car that's not even all that likeable in the first place unlike this which you know has significant advantages over an XK120 and though it's never going to be able to compete against a D-Type which has even more power than this and quite frankly even better handling it's nonetheless an important vehicle for British racing cars and uh, Jaguar in its racing history as well so yeah really really pleased it's on the game and uh, yeah I actually jumped for joy when I uh, saw it was part of the car pass and was really really looking forward to driving it and it's not disappointed whatsoever it's exactly the kind of car I wanted it to be and more in some ways nonetheless thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one bye